Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart and Bitslato and Gemini and Ethereum Solana near Cardano. Lots and lots of things to cover in today's video, so buckle up. And as always, if you like this content, feel free to smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section. But let's go ahead and dive right on into this. Where were you? Where were you yesterday or two days ago, excuse me, two days ago when you heard the news that Russian crypto exchange owner of Bitslato was arrested for cyber criminals? Okay, now this is going to be a uh, cyber criminals. What am I talking about? Okay, I'm just reading the words there. This is going to be a blip. It's not even, it's going to be not remembered in the history of cryptocurrencies. We are very much going to remember FTX in ways that we will remember Mt. Gox. But as far as Bitslato is concerned, um, not so much. But yesterday we had quite the scare in the Bitcoin chart. We saw the price. We saw the price about to break through the monthly range high, and then it got rejected there really hard and dumped really hard, which pure chartists would say that was going to happen anyway. But the catalyst for that dump yesterday was this news. So breaking DOJ Crim Div will hold a press conference at noon to announce, quote, a major international cryptocurrency enforcement action. The U.S. Treasury will also announce an action live stream link on the DOJ website and more info below. So at about 11 a.m. Eastern time on January 18th, we saw a minor panic. That was that was an interesting hour because it's like, what, what's going to happen? What's going on? You know, are they going to crack down on some major with some major regulation? Is there going to be some bomb dropped by the DOJ, by the Department of the Treasury? And if there was a time, that would have been an amazing time for news like that to drop because I'd been talking about what I've been looking for in terms of when Bitcoin got back to its bull market support band. So we have been above the bull market support band for one, two, three, for about a week, for seven days above Bitcoin's bull market support band. And I've been wondering, here's what happened last time Bitcoin got to the bull market support band. It got rejected there really hard. And then the FTX came, news came out and then plummet all the way down to, as of right now, the bear market lows. So I was wondering what's going to happen this time around when we get to the bull market support band. Is there going to be any news that comes out and are we going to get rejected there? Or or could it be a, a even worse scenario where we break through? It feels like everything's bullish, everything's going great. And then news comes out even higher and plummet, we go right back down. And so from 11 a.m. Eastern time until about noon yesterday, that was a very interesting hour. And then it ended up being something about something that nobody has ever heard about. So Bits Lotto came and is gone. U.S. authorities announced on Wednesday that the Russian co-founder of Hong Kong-based cryptocurrency exchange Bits Lotto had been arrested in Miami for allegedly processing $700 million in illicit funds. Bits Lotto's crypto assets were seized and its digital infrastructure was dismantled by French authorities working alongside the U.S. non-event. <laughs> non-event, but the crypto markets did react poorly to the news that there was going to be news, which then turned out to be a non-event and we haven't recovered since then. And so be it. It is what it is. To me, that's a confirmation that this this level was just too hard for us to break through. We need to grab some some liquidity here. We need to to maybe even go lower. I've been talking about going back down to the bull market support band or the 200 day simple moving average or the previous all time high before coming in and testing this range again. We will eventually break through. But it's more of a matter of when, of, of when and not if. And that when could be much farther away or it could be soon. Regardless, we are still under the 21.5 level, which has proven to be a critical level, a difficult level to break through. So looking at the four hour chart and the daily chart, I'm going to go between this very often, a few times here at least. I'm seeing um, potential, potential for bullish moves 
on the four hour chart, looking at the MACD here, but when I look at the MACD on the daily chart, it tells me a different story and it communicates to me that we have a little bit further down to go. I mean, or, you know, it really could be that we could just trend sideways for a while, but I'm not expecting anything noisy to happen um, over the next 24 to 48 hours and tomorrow's Friday. And so weekends are low volume. I wouldn't expect anything crazy to happen over the weekend unless some kind of bombshell is dropped. So I could see us trending sideways or going a little bit lower and then perhaps perhaps a move trying to break through this monthly range high, the 21.5 level next week. I think that would be best case scenario. I don't think looking at this on Friday, January 20th, that we're going to see anything crazy happen between now and, um, and Monday morning or Sunday night, you know, when the, when the markets open back up. So moving along, let's take a look at some other news. Crypto brokerage Genesis. This is the true big, biggest story. You know, this Bits Lotto stuff was a distraction. It was a non-event, but this one is actually a pretty big deal. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm surprised. We've we've seen what happens when um, crypto firms go bankrupt. We saw that with Celsius, with BlockFi, with Voyager, the whole 3AC mess connected to the Luna collapse. And that sent the prices from about $40,000 for Bitcoin to about $30,000. We saw FTX take us another leg lower. And now we're hearing about Genesis owned by the Winklevi. Now that they're collapsing and not much is going on in price action. Well, I mean, there may be some reasons for that. But anyway, crypto brokerage Genesis Global Capital may be, and I've actually heard will be filing for bankruptcy. The collapse of FTX in late 2022 may have been the final straw for Genesis, which earlier that year reportedly suffered losses in, of several hundred million dollars due to its exposure to failed crypto hedge fund, Three Arrows Capital, aka 3AC, aka there's a group of people from 3AC launching GTX because it's one letter above FTX, I suppose. Stay far away from GTX. Three Arrows Capital strike again. And so here's my general feel for this. Genesis was in good shape. It was in better shape, much better shape than Voyager, than Celsius, than BlockFi. But there were other things that, that contributed to their collapse taking longer. And so here we are with Genesis. I actually consider it a, a positive thing, a good thing that what we're seeing from this is the fact that the crypto, crypto markets aren't reacting all that terribly. You know, the worst is behind us. Perhaps we are building up to, uh, you know, at least a bear market rally moving forward, but building up for the next next run, whenever that may be, and that maybe the worst is behind us. But let's take a look here. Genesis Global Capital, the institutional crypto brokerage whose lending unit halted customer withdrawals in the aftermath of FTX's failure is laying the groundwork for a bankruptcy filing according to reports. Bloomberg reported Genesis is in confidential negotiations with various other credit groups, creditor groups, with the company warning it could seek bankruptcy protection if it fails to raise capital. And so I am wondering, I did not see this in the letter. I am wondering if this is chapter, I would assume that this is chapter 11. And so they're going to work with their assets and try to not just completely collapse, not to go completely under, but to try to rework things. I have been reading reports of several issues between the Winklevi and other major players in Genesis. But overall, the fact that we're not we're we're seeing bad news not affect the crypto markets as much anymore, in my opinion, again, is a positive sign. So let's see what happens moving forward. But moving on, this there was something really interesting in this article that I want to point out, and I do not have answers, but I am going to try as hard as I can to find the answers. So opinion, world leaders warmed to blockchain at Davos this year, despite crypto winter. If you don't know what's going on in Switzerland, the World Economic Forum, Forum happened or is happening, and it is uh, we're hearing lots and lots of things from the WEF, 
So it's holding its latest annual meeting in snowy Davos, Switzerland, back in its normal time slot after a few years of pan corona pan coronavirus pandemic chaos. If you remember last year, it was in May of 2022, but this year it is back in January. And so moving forward, it'll be in January. Crypto be being here isn't really a surprise. What is a surprise is just how the industry almost seems to be doubling down on its presence. Now, that is a different story from what I'm a different narrative from what I'm reading yesterday. Yesterday, the article that I read talked about how there is more of a subdued presence, and I tend to believe there is a subdued pre presence. And But what I was seeing from that article was a lot of positives over the cryptocurrency um, platforms, exchanges, whatever that are there. And so the big ones that I noticed in that, in that article, and this article talks about it as well, Filecoin, Anchor, Polygon, Casper, which I am very intrigued by Casper. I mentioned that yesterday. Watch that video if you haven't already. I may be buying a lot of CSPR, but I want to do more research on it. And there were some other ones, some other players that were there. Binance, of course, was there. And, um, and so... The fact that we have this smaller group, which it is, it's a smaller group, and maybe that smaller group is doubling down, that is the, the, the group of people that I'm intrigued by because I think that they are really in, in this for the long haul, and they want to really revolutionize the space. But moving on, there's some bullet points I want to read from this article, including one thing that just completely blew my mind. Uh, there are some seriously interesting pan panel panels happening. What really surprised me is the fact that there are so many government and international agency officials speaking at crypto-specific events. That shouldn't be a surprise, and that's not the thing that blew my mind. But more and more, you know, the United States is going to be a slow mover on this, but more and more we're seeing... Uh, agency officials, government and international agency officials speaking at crypto specific events, including uh, a very high profile official from South Africa who made some fantastic points. I mentioned that yesterday. Some 2,700 world leaders and their staffs are supposed to be in attendance, according to the WF press release. I sat on a number of discussions so far. FTX has obviously come up a number of times, but panels are seemingly trying to move past it to address other aspects of the industry at present. And then here's the one. This one's really interesting to me. I moderated a panel for one inch. There's another one who was there, wherein we came close to the conclusion that the cryptocurrency industry is driving the growing dollarization of the world. I want to revisit this more in depth at a future date. You and me both. Are you kidding me? Now, this is the opposite of everything that I'm hoping for crypto. Now, that may be good for me as a resident of the United States for the dollarization of the world to happen, but if you were to head over to my TikTok account and you were to read the tagline there, what does it say? It says, calling BS on the melting ice cube Ponzi known as the US dollar since 2010. I've been in this, not in crypto, but in similar things, libertarian, Austrian economic type things that have driven me to crypto since 2010 as a result of the global financial crisis in 2008. I did a deep dive and wanted to know what was going on. And this just came out of left field. Are you kidding me? But I understand. I understand the growing dollarization in the world. You go to all these websites, you go to Chinese owned, not Chinese owned, Binance owned, so yeah, Chinese owned, coinmarketcap.com. And what do you see? You see everything priced in dollars. You go to, I, I would assume, and, and I, I am convinced, you, if you were to go to a foreign country, whatever, Bangladesh, and go to a website, a crypto website in Bangladesh, I have not done this, but I wouldn't be surprised if they had crypto priced in their fiat currency and in the US dollar. People want to know how much crypto is priced in dollars. And I know this from talking about people, talking to people from other countries. They don't care about crypto priced in their currency. They care about it priced in their dollars. They want to buy crypto in dollars. They want to sell it in dollars and whatever, convert back to their own currencies. But this is really fascinating to me. And I don't think that this is going to last forever because I do think that there is coming a day when the US dollar is going to die, the dollar as we know it, the last time it died, August of 1971, when we removed any, any reference to the US dollar being backed by gold with Richard Nixon, 
And today, one day, moving forward, the same thing is going to happen. The US dollar, we will not price crypto in what we know of as the US dollar. Perhaps it'll be something with the name the US dollar, or maybe we'll find a better comparison. But it's not going to be the US dollar. And so we'll see what happens there, but I am going to do a lot more. I want to revisit this more in depth at a future date, just like the writer of this article. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Anyway, next, Ethereum has the most developers, but these newer chains are growing fast. I was really, really fascinated by this article and it, and it raised my eyebrows and I think in a good way, in a good way, I, I need, I need to revisit a lot of things with this article. So stay tuned. The year of the merge saw the number of Ethereum developers jump to 5,000, a 400% rise compared to 2008. So Ethereum developers, the number of developers are continuing to grow. That's a good thing. But what does the article say? These newer chains are growing fast. And so crypto focused early stage VC firm Electric Capital has found that while Ethereum has the most developers in total, a majority of monthly active developers are working on other ecosystems. Despite a bear crypto market in 2022, developers continue to create and progress towards mass adoption of decentralized applications, aka dApps. The crypto industry added 5% more developers in 2022 year on year, despite a 70% plunge in crypto asset prices. I I think that's a very good sign. Um, yeah, the year was a rocking one for crypto assets. Let's move on. There's some what what ones? Which ones are the biggest growing platforms? Where are developers going? That should be a key indication as to what you should be buying right now. Because you think about it, think about it. All right, why did Solana go from twenty dollars in July of 2021 up to two hundred and fifty dollars? in September or October of 2021. Well, one, all right, we're gonna talk, you're gonna talk about FTX, you're gonna say it was FTX related, it wasn't only FTX related. The big thing that happened with Solana's was NFTs. The big thing that drove their price up to crazy heights was people going to Magic Eden, people going to salonart.io and trading NFTs. That was a second wave of NFT season that saw a lot of growth in the NFT space. People were going to Ethereum and seeing the insane gas fees and being like, I do not want anything to do with this. I was one of those people. And so then when they went to the next best place, which was Solana at the time and probably still is Solana. And so a lot of money was pouring into Solana. And I don't think FTX had nearly as much to do with it as people think. And so why am I saying that? Because you want to see where the developers are going because the next big thing that comes next euphoria phase is probably going to be developed where there are a lot of developers going, if that makes sense. And so where are they going? Really interesting to me. The year of the merge was significant for Ethereum and its share of new developers for the stand at 16%. I don't know what that's saying, but next next sentence, here we go. But developers working on the Solana, Near, and Polygon protocols rose 40% year on year and added more than 500 total monthly active developers combined. So Ethereum's growing. It is growing in terms of developers. It is calcifying in many ways. It is the king of layer ones right now. Man, I think that Ethereum is going to remain the king, I think. But we have a lot of so-called ETH killers. And what are those ETH killers? Where are the developers going along the so-called ETH killers? They're going to Solana and they're going to Near. But a big reason, they're not just going to those two. There's a, a list that, that of, of other ones that are growing well, but those are the two ones that are growing the most. But the thing that gives me more hope for Ethereum is Polygon. Polygon is a layer two and bringing solutions to whom? Well, to, to Solana, but also in, in many ways, it, it, in mo mostly to Ethereum. And Polygon grew by 40% to 1,100 plus developers. Solana grew by 83%. 
And why is this significant to me? Why am I spending so much time talking about this? Because so many people are out on Solana. They're saying it's dead. They're saying it's not worth touching. I, there's somebody who I follow who, um, I, whose opinion I, I respect greatly who says that Solana is garbage, that it is straight up trash. And he's like, I'm warning you now, Solana is trash. And I'm seeing stuff like this and I'm, I'm raising my eyebrows and I'm like, are you sure that Solana is dead? Now, Solana has some major issues. They are having some major, major scalability issues. They got hacked several times in 2024, sorry, 2024, 2022. They have crashed. They have not been able to um, remain up <laughs> for multiple times in 2022 and 2021. And so those are growing pains and they're, they're facing issues with scalability that I think we're going to see from a lot of these other layer one so-called ETH killers at some point in the future. They're not as big as Solana. Solana is a top 10 cryptocurrency. And so perhaps we're going to see Solana do just fine. And so what if Solana puts in a higher high from its bear market bottom of $8 in 2024, 2025, 2026, whatever it is, this could potentially be, I'm rethinking Solana. I was, I was more hesitant at some point with Solana. And, but if you were to watch my bear market buying guide, it's one of the four cryptocurrencies that I say, this is a back the truck up cryptocurrency. And I may need to go back to that, that this is a back the truck up cryptocurrency. Now, what are those other cryptos, platforms, layer ones, not just layer one, some layer twos here too, that are getting a great deal of, uh, of new developers. Well, there's Sui, Aptos, Starknet, Mina, Osmosis, Hedera, Optimism, and Arbitrum. Those are other ones listed in this article. So those are ones to keep on your radar as well. But man, guys, we're gonna have a, a long way before Ethereum is knocked off. You know, I, I get questions all the time about is Ethereum going to flip Bitcoin next cycle, the flipping. And an answer that I've given to people when, when they ask that is, you know, there's only one Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be one Bitcoin. There's just, th that's the way that Bitcoin was created. That's just how it's going to be. There is no, there are no circumstances that will ever exist to which we can get another Bitcoin. But Ethereum there are lots and lots of other Ethereums. Okay, so they need to worry more so about will Ethereum be flipped? I don't think so, but I have some concerns right about here and I am pointing at Cardano. If you're, not list if you're just listening to me, believe it or not, I know that that's not one that I, I mentioned had a lot of developer growth. There are things that could explode onto the scene there are, there are platforms, there's layer ones that have claimed to solve the blockchain that trilemma. I will believe that when I see it, we are seeing issues with Solana solving the blockchain trilemma. We are seeing, definitely seeing issues with Ethereum and we'll see that some of these other ones are small. They don't have as much attention on them right now, but I'm curious to see what happens when the world's best hackers draw their attention to you near or whoever else, Elrond, I could go on. There's, there, I, I have reviewed 17, I believe, layer ones so far. And so only, only one can be king at a time, or only one or two could be top dogs, but we'll see. But what I'm intrigued about with Cardano, and I am going to talk a little bit more about Cardano later in this video, is just how slowly they're rolling things out. And maybe, maybe that's the name of the game. Maybe they're doing it perfectly. But Solana, Solana co-founder sees potential for devs to lead its network in 2023. As the crypto developer ecosystem expands, which I already talked about, major ecosystems outside the top two cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum are growing. According to a new report, about 72% of monthly active developers are working on blockchains that are not part of the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks, according to the 2022 Electric Capital Developer Report, which the other article recently mentioned. Solana, Solana of all layer ones, 
saw the highest number of new developers contributing to the ecosystem. Amazing. Even with around 2,000 total developers as of December 2022, Solana is still about 3,500 developers short of Ethereum's count. So they have a long way to go, which had a total of about 5,700 developers. It's important to note, though, that Ethereum launched in 2013 and Solana launched in 2018. So the former enjoyed a five-year head start. I forgot that this was an article with a paywall, but I did. I was able to read it at some point, at somewhere, and um, in general, devs, I agree with the Solana co-founder, co devs are going to lead its network if there is any hope for the future of Solana to become the king of layer ones, to become the ETH killer. You know, it's already superior in TPS. Well, no, that's not, not, not true anymore with uh, ETH 2.0, but it's going to have to be new, amazing, wonderful innovations with its devs. But Ethereum has a lot more devs right now, and so we'll see how much Solana grows in terms of its devs. Near protocol was intriguing to me as, all right, Near has been on my radar for a while. I made a bear market buying guide video, not a bear market. Well, would I buy in the bear market video on Near? And this is one that I, I would say, yes, I am planning on buying Near in the bear market. As of today, it is currently down 90% from its all-time high. It has very good tokenomics. Um, I would love to see it go a little bit more down a little bit more before um, diving in here and perhaps uh, waiting a little bit longer, waiting till the end of 2023 or sometime in 2024 20, before loading up. But near is on my radar and it should be on yours. They have a total supply of 1 billion circulating supply of 850 million. Volume is good for, for this time in the bear market. I like what I'm seeing from near as far as you know, dev growth, not too inflationary. And that is one that is a somewhat smaller market cap. Okay, rank 30. But I mean, the difference between 30 and eight when it comes to market cap is pretty significant. So Solana is about three times or four times the size of Near in terms of market cap. Near could outperform Solana. But at the same time, Solana is much lower in price because of because of uh, concerns that will probably melt away during the next euphoria phase. So keep your eyes on near. Anyway, Cardano. I want to talk about Cardano. And the reason why I want to talk about Cardano, I saw some articles about Cardano. And that's always good to see articles about cryptocurrencies that you're interested in buying. But I want to say this and I'm going to say it declaratively as of right now. Cardano if I were to only be allowed to buy one cryptocurrency ahead of the next euphoria phase, that cryptocurrency would be Cardano. I've said it before, I'll say it again. And the reason why is that Cardano has a history of dropping really low in bear markets and then putting higher highs next cycle. And so if you remember, I know I've talked about this a ton, but 2018, 2019, Cardano flatlined, bottomed out at two cents, and then did a 150X from its bear market bottom to its peak. I'm not expecting a 150X this time around, but what I'm seeing with Cardano is it's it's a very much the same thing as, hap as happened with Cardano. It has dropped more than 90% from its peak to its bear market bottom. And I have a lot of confidence that Cardano is going to put in a higher high next cycle. And the big thing that I've said about Cardano for years now is we won't know what Cardano is until sometime around 2030. And because of that, that may sound like a negative, but people are going to buy Cardano off like, like they buy a growth stock. They're going to buy it for the hope that it becomes this massive, huge ecosystem that everyone's excited to get in on, that, they, that the hope that this would be the future. And so here we are in 2023. And yeah, you know, I am starting to see the future unfold a little bit. And I like what I'm seeing. But there's still a long way to go. But anyway, let's take a look at what we're seeing with Cardano. Ada Whale on Cardano, quote, an insane amount of cool stuff is coming. So Ada Whale tweets, try to avoid talking about soon trade back, trademark stuff on Cardano. But just a reminder, an insane amount of cool stuff is coming. Two of the most significant stablecoin launches, top tier trading platform, ebook mobile dApps, privacy sidechain, pooled lending, stable sop, 
stable swap, Hydra, and government governance. And so this article lists a lot of the things that are coming with Cardano. An algorithmic stablecoin, DGED, which I don't plan on buying any of. I am a little bit uh, hesitant with algorithmic stablecoins, but, but, all right, let's say you bought Luna low and sold high. You did very well for yourself, okay? So what's going to happen with DGED and how will it affect, affect Cardano's price? We will just have to wait and see. So DGED stablecoin and then fiat backed, more my preference, stablecoin USDA. Emergo, the official commercial arm and founding entity of the Cardano blockchain, announces planned launch of its new U.S. dollar-backed stablecoin, USDA. USDA is the fo first fully fiat-backed regulatory compliant stablecoin in the Cardano ecosystem. I have a lot of hope for this stablecoin, USDA. I think it can be and will be as what's the stablecoin that exists right now that I would say I have the most confidence in? It's USDC. This could be another USDC, another cryptocurrency that I would have no problem, a stablecoin that I have no problem buying and holding and thinking it's safe. Um, regulatory compliant stablecoin in the Cardano ecosystem. Stablecoins can and will drive up prices of the cryptocurrencies that they're built on, of the blockchains that they're built on. So we have two here, DGED and USDA. Very bullish for Cardano. USDA next. Stablecoin Dex 20, 20 swap. Teddy swap. This is what Ada Whale said about this project on January 7th, 2023. They are a stablecoin Dex launched by a well-known team. Will eventually grow into something more similar to Curve, which I have a I, I just made a bear market. Well, would I buy Curve in the bear market video yesterday? You can watch that right now. Um, my answer, short answer, no, but something similar to Curve, which does a lot with stable coins, generates yield. Um, I'm, I'm in on that. You know, I'm, I'm in on using it. I'm not interested in buying CRV, the cryptocurrency. Um, similar to Curve on Ethereum, much needed will launch of several more stable coins soon. Um, I'm not going to check out the thread by Subcritical TV, but um, there are there are ways to farm, to pool different stable coins, generate yield, and there will most likely be a USDA plus Cardano pair that will get you some yield. Um, I, I generally tend to think that something like this would be safe, that would be fine to, to hold your crypto on. The thing you got to remember is that during bull runs, the yield is probably going to be very high. And during bear markets, it's probably not going to be worth it. But something to keep in mind, Teddy Swap. And then Book EO mobile app. Who else is excited for the Book EO mobile app, Cardano community? So a mobile app, a mobile reading app is being built right now on Cardano. Who knows what it's going to be like? Will it compete with Kindle or with anything else? The verdict is out. My tendency is to guess no, but more and more development on Cardano. We are seeing Cardano's, I'm just remembering now, some people joke that Cardano is a meme coin. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and obviously that, that was a, a fun joke for a time because it's like, what's going on Cardano? Are you, are you ever going to do anything? But we're seeing, obviously, I mean, I don't need to say this Cardano is not a meme coin and we're seeing development on it. So we'll see who knows what will come with book EO, but then decentralized banking protocol meld. So meld testnet update. We have supply and borrowing functionality on the protocol working as expected. So what is this? This is another Ave which I am all for. Listen, wealthy people do not sell their cryptocurrency, they will, their assets. I shouldn't say their cryptocurrency, but they do not sell stocks. They do not sell any, they, they borrow, they borrow. And my plan for the next euphoria phase, I am not going to sell because let me tell you, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case for some of you, doing my 2021 taxes was not fun at all. <laughs> not at all. And so I am going to be looking to, here's what, here's the way it works with Ave at least, put $100,000 worth of Ethereum on there, borrow $80,000 in stable coins, use those $80,000 to what, buy a rental property, invest somewhere else, I don't know. But Ethereum crashes, I get liquidated, it's all good, I got my $80,000. 
And so what, 20% loss, I'll take a 20% loss over a 80% loss, I will definitely. So MELD, that's uh, what we have going on with Cardano, decentralized banking. And then confidentiality platform midnight. So Cardano might, you know, moving moving more towards the XLM, not XLM, XMR, Monero direction, following in the in the feet of, in the in the feet in the steps of Light Litecoin with the Mimble Wimble update. All right, it's good to see. I I like privacy. I hope you do too. Um, and then interest rate pro protocol liquid. So happy new year's aqua farmers, liquid labs. We wish everyone success in leaps and bounds in the year of the water rabbit. As we progress through the liquid one V secure V one security audit, we wanted to share a checklist of the remaining tasks before main net launch. I am not going to read that checklist, but Hey, we have a, an interest rate protocol call liquid in development on the Cardano blockchain. And then one more Cardano Cardano related article Cardano revs up first automotive project with e tuck tuck announcement in Davos at the World Economic Forum. So this is pretty small potatoes. I'm not going to lie. It's t e tuck tuck is launching its initial operations in Sri Lanka, trying to bring electric infra electric vehicle in infrastructure to two wheeled in three wheeled vehicles and they're doing this with Cardano. And so I'm not going to go into the article. I know that I've gone long already and I hope that you are still here with me and smash up that like button. If you are, love to hear your thoughts. But another thing, another project that is being built on Cardano that gives me hope that Cardano can be this ever reaching, wide reaching ecosystem. E Tuck Tuck, what a name. So taking a look at crypto prices, yeah, we're, we're a little flat. Bitcoin 0.12% up, Ethereum 0.19% down as I'm making this video. Binance at 292, XRP 39 cents, Solana 21 cents. I would love to see Solana move down. I saw FTM, or sorry, not FTM, FTT is up big time today, which makes me want to do violent things to myself in the moment. But I will not do that. I will spare you of all of that. But that is all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. And I will most certainly be seeing you in another video. Peace.